Kemabaim, welcome, Baruch Hashem, to another season of Perasha classes here in Harada Banon, Avenue as the corner of East Ninth. We are learning tonight Perashat Noah, Be'azat Hashem. Perashat Noah is infamous for the flood. Now we have to see exactly, you know, the background of what happened in the story of the flood. Rabbis tell us that the people that were in the generation of the flood weren't ordinary people. They were people that were so strong they were able to kill lions with their bare hands. It was an optimal weather all the time between spring and summer, not too hot, not too cold. They had to plant every 40 years because, uh, you know, why should they go through the whole process of planting if they plant once and everything just grows for 40 years or less? Unbelievable. This, by the way, is going to happen in Alam Abba. So what happened in the daughter of the Mabu, generation of the flood, will happen in the Atid Labo in Alam Abba. And all this, and they still managed somehow to sin. And we'll see exactly what their sin was. And Hashem says, uh, you know, uh, what, what was exactly their sin? So it says, Kishhid kol basar et darko ala aritz. Um, primarily, their sin was bestiality. Um, people were going with animals, Dogs were going with wolves. Wolves were going with zebras. I mean, the whole world was really upside down. But with all that, Hashem was tolerant. With everything that was going on, denying the existence of God, people going wayward, people not following instructions, with all that, Hashem was very tolerant. Hashem said, I still keep man alive until they had the problem of Hamas. Hamas means... They had problems between Ben Adam and Havero. Petty thievery. Uh, stealing uh, a minimum amount. Saying it doesn't mean anything. But, you know, going to a grocery store and stealing from him a dollar. Another guy coming to the same grocery store and stealing him a dollar. After a thousand people, he's losing a thousand dollars. So people said, eh, it's not a big deal. So says the Midrash, Lo nehtam, uh, dinam illa ala gezel. Gezel is Hamas. Hashem couldn't tolerate Hamas. Which means, just an insight, before we continue, Hashem is very tolerant of a lot of sins. What He's not tolerant of is sins between man to man. That, He says, we explained it about uh, Yom Kippur, about the severity of it. Hashem is tolerant of a lot of things. Hashem has Erech One of the things that Hashem does, cannot handle, cannot you know, tolerate, is Ben Adam the Havero. So what happens? Says the Or Gedal, yeah, like this. He says, Ka'ashir kawaha Adam gadol. You know, I mentioned the, the Anakim, their giants. They ruled the whole world. He says, when a person is that great, He tends to forget God. And now he feels that he's in control and he could do whatever he wants in the world. They had an abundance of wealth, abundance of prosperity, of Beracha, of Parnasa. They amiru, but they said, Ma shaddai kina abdenu. Why do we have to worship God? I mean, we, they, they failed, they tend to, to, to fail to realize that He's the one controlling everything, but they thought that they're controlling everything. So why should we worship God? They amiru. And they said, O anahnu, O atta. It's either us or you. We worship ourselves. We're the ones in control. It's not you. Ma aminim sheyesh yom hadin. They believe that after 120 years, they will, they'll be judged. But in the interim, let's do what we want. Uh, after 120 years, I'll deal with it. I'll get good lawyers, good advocates. I'll deal with it after. But in the interim, let me do what I want to do. So what happens? Says the Pasuk in last week's Perasha. Bayar Hashem ki adam ba'aretz Shem said, it's, they, they reached a point of no return. They, they, they're so bad. So to speak, Hashem regretted creating man. Because He created man to serve Him, and now He's doing the opposite. And what does Hashem say? I'm going to erase everybody. And now, all of a sudden, in the middle of everything, Comes Noah, steps right in Noah, and Noah is the only one who finds favor in God's eyes. We'll see why. Why you have the whole world upside down. The whole world going 
getting destroyed. We have one man in the middle of everything that can potentially, remember what I'm saying right now, can potentially save the world and stop all the disaster from happening. But he chooses the other road. He chooses the other way. Noah has the capacity, has the ability, has the potential to save the world from destruction. He does not. Says the Gemara, says the Midrash, pardon me, Bereshit Rabbah. Amar bi Abba Kahana. Says Rabbi Abba Bar Kahana. What does it mean? Ki nihamti ki asitim v'noah batsahin. The Pasuk says that God regretted creating man, but then you say, v'noah matsahin. Noah is the only one who found favor in God's eyes. Well, make up your mind. Did Hashem regret creating man? Or is Noah the good guy? Says the Midrash, Ela, Afilu Noah, even Noah, Shenishtayer mehem, lo haya kedai, Ela shematsahin. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, Noah was also supposed to perish in the Mabul. You know, Hasve Shalom, when I'm making light of the situation that Noah was a Sadiq, he was. But according to the Midrash, that Noah was also guilty of whatever problems were going on in the generation. And the only reason he was saved is because God found favor in his eyes. What it was, we don't know. Matzahin bi'anei Hashem. It's funny because the letters hen make the letters Noah. Right? You take hen, you flip it around, it's Noah. What exactly was Noah's problem? Well, let's see the Pesukim. Noah is Sadiq, Tamim Haya Bedorotav, et Ha'elohim, et Alech Noah. Let me pause right now. I just read to you four words. Et Ha'elohim, et Alech Noah. Which means Noah was straight walking the right path with God. What does that go show me? He wasn't walking the right way with men. He was walking the right way with God. He, was, he found favor in God's eyes. He did not find favor in people's eyes. Et Ha'elohim. Good. So Hashem commands Noah, I'm about to get rid of the whole world, bring a, a, a major flood. You and your children and your, the wives are the only ones that are going to be saved along with the animals. But before that, you have to create a teva, an ark. And what are the measurements? 300 amma. That's the length. The width is 50. And the height is 30. Now, why do I need to know exactly the height, the length, the width? I'm not building a teba. It's not that I have now the instructions from Home Depot that I have to create something. I'm never creating a teba. So why do I need to know exactly the measurements of the teba? Well, if Hashem deemed it fit to write in the, in the Torah, that means I have to learn something from it, right? Okay, what do we learn? We'll see. And in the middle of this teba, Tzohar ta'asela teba. You are to make something called a tsohar. Now, we have no idea what a tsohar is until Rashi fills in the gaps, fills in the empty pieces. And what does Rashi say? Some people say tsohar is a window. Some people say tsohar is a jewel that he had that illuminated the teva. Because imagine this, you're in the teva for 40 days and 40 nights. There is no light. So how do you illuminate the teva? So mahlokit, what does tsohar mean? Either a gem that illuminated the teva, or a window. Okay. Why does he need a window exactly? Fine. You have to make it three levels. We know, Baruch Hashem, we learned to the elementary. The bottom level was the, the garbage. Second level was the animals. And the first level was men. Hashem Noah. Now Hashem tells Noah, Bo ata v'chol betecha el It is time to enter the teva. Why? Ki otecha ra'iti tzadik lefanai. Because you are the one that I find a tzaddik in my eyes. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, he is not a tzaddik in man's eyes. He wasn't a popular guy, Noah. He wasn't so popular with the people. People didn't really like Noah. But God liked him. If Hashem likes him, that's a good reason to be saved. But the question is, these are the pesuki. The question is, if Hashem really wants to bring a flood and get rid of the whole world, couldn't Hashem make it that he transport Noah and his whole family to a different country? Because don't forget, the Midrash says that the whole world had the Mabul except which country? Eris Israel. Eris Israel is the only country where the Mabul wasn't, didn't affect it. So Hashem, transport Noah. I mean, you could do anything, right? Transport Noah, put him in Eris Israel, 
Meanwhile, get rid of the flood and do whatever you want to do afterwards. No, you have to go and construct the teva, 120 years. So we learned when we were in school, because as he's building the teva for 120 years, he's supposed to tell people, do teshuva. And you know, they're supposed to hear him. And we learned that they didn't hear him. Fine. This is a midrash that we grew up with. It's not, it's not an accepted midrash amongst all. Not everybody accepts this midrash. So again, why can't Hashem just make it that, you know what? Make it that Noah and his family, the ones that are being saved, live in a me'ara, in a cave. Like the Bishop Ambar Yuhai, right? The Bishop Ambar Yuhai lived in a me'ara for how many years? 13 years. So what? Noah can't live for 40 days? Are you going to tell me what about the animals? So just like Hashem created the animals on the sixth day, He could create the animals anew. I mean, these are things that Hashem could do. If, if Hashem could do everything, out of all the things Hashem tells him, no, I want you to build a teva. And sit in the teva. Now mind you, it's a stinky teva. There's animals. There's garbage. It wasn't pleasant. For 40 days and 40 nights. And I mean, it says, Shalosh me'ot, hamishim amma, shaloshim amma. But with all those measurements, it's still cramped. Because you have lions, you have zebras, you have elephants, you have animals on the teva. How did they get there in the first place? That's anotherness. That's a miracle. How did they enter? But you have all these animals cramped in this teva. I mean, it's not a pleasant situation. It's not an ideal situation. So Hashem, if you want to save Noah and his family, why don't you make it easier for Noah than building, than constructing this whole teva? So I saw over here, Sefer, Tseror Hamor. Tseror Hamor, ladies and gentlemen, his granddaughter married Rabbi Yosef Karo, the author of the Shaharuch, which we're talking about the 16th century, talking about the greats. So he says over here, he says, uh, They all sinned. Animals, uh, wild animals, tamed animals, poultry, birds. Noah also sinned. Why? Because Noah saw what was happening and Noah did not beseech God to save the generation from the Mabul. You know, let's take the Midrash we quoted earlier. Let's say that everybody accepts this Midrash, that he is supposed to build a Tibah for 120 years because he's supposed to tell people to do Teshuvah. Fine. Now, there's one thing telling people to do Teshuvah. There's another thing by going and praying to God, Hashem, Instead of me telling the people to do the tshuva, Hashem, just please, because of my zechuyot, was my merits, make it, don't bring a tip, don't bring a mabul. There's one thing talking to the guy direct, and there's another thing talking to the one that could stop the mabul, which is God. But Noah did not do that. Noah, lo hitpalel al doro. This is the class tonight. Noah did not pray for his generation. And what does God do? Now the Mabul, ladies and gentlemen, was 40 days and 40 nights. But how long were they in the ark? One year. Why? This is, this is very, very hard words. Harsh words also. No, we should never know when we lose a loved one, mainly a father or a mother, we should never know, but we have to say Kaddish for, 12, for 11 months, right? In the end of the 11th month, we stop for one week. Now, why don't we do that, ladies and gentlemen? Because the Sha'im are in Gehinam for 12 months. If we say Kaddish for 12 months, we are sort of saying that the one we're saying Kaddish for is Rasha, is an evil person. So we don't want to say he's an evil person, so we stop. We stop saying Kaddish in the end of the 11th month. But says the Tzorah Mor, and this is a Halakha, and this is a Gemara, and this is a Midrash, the Sha'im are judged in Gehinam for 12 months. If you want to know the details, it's six months of cold and six months of hot. It's a very perplexing Zohar, what the Zohar says about it, what they do in the hot months and what they do in the cold months. And forget that. What does it mean that there's cold and hot? It's Shamaim. It's all spirituality. It's not physical. It's not physicality. What does it mean? That it's cold and hot. Again, it's not the class right now. But according to the Surah Mor, Noah was judged like a rasha. I bet you didn't learn that in school. No. They'll never make the children make projects of Noah being a rasha. Now again, I'm not saying it. I would never say it. The rabbis are telling us. The Midrash. 
The great rabbis are telling us that Noah was not such a good guy. Ah, oh, but the Pasuk says, Noah is Sadiq Tamim Ayah Beturotav. Yeah, it ha Elohim it Noah. He was a Sadiq in God's eyes. People's eyes, he was not a Sadiq. Why? Because he didn't pray for people. You see a person doing something bad. Instead of going and rebuking them and doing something bad, step to the side for a second and ask God, Hashem, they don't know what they're doing. Please, I'm finding the benefit of the doubt. You know, Mosei Shabbat was the yard site of Rab Levi Yitzhak of Berdichov. His name was Rab Levi Yitzhak ben Sara Sasha. He was called the advocate on behalf of the Jewish people. Sanigoram shel Israel. Why? Because he always tried to find the benefit of the doubt in every single Jew. The famous story is that he sees a person wearing tefillin and he's changing the, the tire or the wheel on his chariot. And he's all muddy and it's all tar and everything. So his students were telling the rabbi, Rabbi, look what he's doing. Look, look. He's changing the, he's changing the tire and he's wearing tefillin. He's getting the tefillin all, all, all dirty. So he flipped it around. He said, he looked to God. He said, God Almighty, look at your Jewish people. Even while he has to change the wheel on his chariot, he still makes sure to wear tefillin. So he flipped everything to the positive. Noah couldn't do that. Is it hard for us to do that sometimes? You bet yeah. Many times it's very hard to find the benefit of that in people, to see the good in other people, or better yet, to pray to God to forgive people. Noah did not do that. Noah saw people doing something. Hey, what are you doing? Do teshuvah. Don't you know what will happen? I don't think anybody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that they're going to hell. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that there's the angel of death. Nobody wants to hear that there's a guy uh, with a pitchfork, you know, wearing that... Uh, that the hoodie, uh, he's about to get you. Nobody wants to know that. They know it already. Nobody wants to hear it again. What they do want to hear is come over to them, speak to them nicely, find the benefit of the doubt, go beseech God, pray on behalf, uh, go to, uh, pray to God on behalf of the Jewish people. Noah was lacking in that. That's what Surah Amor says. Says the Bereshit Rabbah, Midrash, Amar bi Yitzhak, Ata Noah, Tevatcha, you, Noah, the only way you will find purity in the fault that you had of not beseeching me on behalf of the Jewish people, the only way I'll forgive you and purify you is if you enter the teva. So which means, what we see from here, ladies and gentlemen, is that the teva was not only a means of being saved from the mabul, but the teva was also meant to purify Noah. How? We still didn't see. We saw that he had to stay 12 months like the Rishayim. But we didn't see how is he purifying, cleansing himself in the Teba for 12 months. Okay. So this is where we start the class. There's a Midrash that says like this. Besha'an she'amar Hashem le'moshe ve'atahani hali ve'ase otecha le'goy gadol. You know, the Jewish people committed a very grave sin. They worshipped the golden calf. Abu Dazara. And Hashem wanted to erase the Jewish nation and start anew. From Moshe Rabbeinu. So Hashem tells Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, that's it. It's over for them. I'm going to start a new nation. Amar Moshe. So what did Moshe Rabbeinu say? Im askim lekach. If really I'm going to agree that Hashem is going to get rid of the Jewish people and start from me. Yomru alai she'ani harakti et Yisrael. What are people going to say about me for generations to come? It was because of me that there's no Jewish nation. I'm the one who killed the Jewish nation in the Midbar. Kemo she'asa Noah ledoro. Whoa, who's the culprit in this story, says Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu saying this. Moshe Rabbeinu saying, who's the find fault? Who do we find fault in the whole story of Noah? Not the people of the generation. Noah himself. Wow, if I say this in any other place, any other setting, they'll, they'll behead me. What? You're saying Noah is the culprit? I'm not saying it. The Midrash is saying, Moshe Rabbeinu himself said, if I agree for God to get rid of the Jewish people, they're going to tell me, they're going to write about me in the Torah forever and ever for generations to come that I got rid of the Jewish people just like Noah did. Shele'ahar, says Moshe Rabbeinu, Shele'ahar shuvteha hatsalato bateva. After Noah was promised, Noah, don't worry, you, your wife, your children and their wives, nothing will happen to them teva. What did Noah do? Noah said, Shalom alay nafshi, I'm good, see ya. You, I don't care what happens to you guys. 
You could, you could burn whatever for all I care. I'm good. Belachen nikra hamabul al shemo. You know, we were reading the Haftarah, the Mabul, and we will call the Mabul, not a Mabul, we'll call it Me Noah, the waters of Noah. Forever, imagine this. It's not a story book where I could throw it out in the garbage. It's a Torah Kedoshah that's written in the Netzach Netzachim. Forever the Mabul will be called after Noah. Me Noah. Why? Because Noah did not ask Hashem to save the generation. And after Moshe Rabbeinu says this, Moshe Rabbeinu pleads to God to save the Jewish nation. After saying all this, so I'm not going to be like Noah, by the way. I'm not being like... It's funny, because both Moshe and Noah had their own arcs. Moshe was in a mini ark, and Noah was in a huge ark. Funny that Moshe Rabbeinu was up in heaven 40 days and 40 nights, and the Mabu was 40 days and 40 nights. There's a lot of uh, connections, there's a lot of similarities between Noah and, and Moshe. But the one major difference, ladies and gentlemen, is that Moshe beseeched God to save the Jewish people. And Noah failed in that aspect, in that point. Continues the Midrash and says like this, Mashal, Two boats, two ships, about to, uh, about to sink. One of them, the captain, jumped off and he said, I'm saving myself. Who cares what happened to the people on the boat, on the ship? And the other... Uh, boat says, I go down with my ship. Right? I always say it famously. That's what I, have. I think what happened with the Titanic. Titanic guy, he jumped off. He said, I'm saving myself. I don't care what happens to the people on the Titanic. That's not a captain. That's not a, a person that cares about the people on the boat. Noah did not care about the people on the boat. I mean, you know what it means. He only cared about himself. Moshe Rabbeinu cared about everybody, himself and, about, and the Jewish nation. The rabbis also continue and they say that Avraham Avinu was, that's why she says, if Noah was in the time of Avraham Avinu, I mean, he would pale in comparison to Avraham Avinu. Why? Because when Hashem tells Avraham Avinu, I'm going to get rid of Sedom. Now, let's stop right now. Does Avraham Avinu have any affiliation with Sedom whatsoever? Zero. Where's Avraham Avinu and where's Sedom? Avraham Avinu could say, God, this is what you want? If this is what you want, uh, why, am I inter in, in, why am I mingling in your, in, a, in your business? I'll sleep, you do whatever you want. No. Abraham Abinu asked Hashem, what if there's 50? What if there's 40, 30, 20, 10? Please Hashem, don't destroy so. Why do you care about Sedom? Sedom has no connection with you. But when I find out that there are other people, that there are other people in the world struggling, I must open my mouth. It's funny. Because was Avraham Avinu a Jew? He was not. Were people in Sedom Jewish? They were not. So Avraham Avinu, which is supposed to be, which he's our patriarch, our first father, and if you want to say he was Jewish, the people in Sedom were not Jewish. So we have a Jewish person beseeching God on behalf of non-Jews. So what do I learn from here? So not only are you supposed to pray to Hashem to save the world when there are Jews in it, but even if you hear about catastrophes happening to non-Jewish people, you're supposed to pray on their behalf. Don't be an achzar. Don't be a cruel person. Hearing all the news that's going on. You saw the hurricane two weeks ago? So uh, I, don't, I don't have any family in Florida. I'm, I'm good. I don't know any people that have. No, I'm good. Okay, you don't have any family, but look what happened. Devastating. People lost their lives. People lost everything that they worked for in the, in the Mabul, really in the hurricane. And you're good because Baruch Hashem, you're in Brooklyn, New York, and it doesn't affect you. No, ask Hashem, open up Erek pray, pray to Hashem on behalf of every single creation, every single person that Hashem created. Ask Hashem to spare them their lives. No, but Noah said, as long as I'm, I'm good, we're good. So ladies and gentlemen, that is why Noah, Hashem tells Noah he has to build a teva. Because in the teva, like I mentioned earlier, it was very cramped. Very tight, very stuffy. Oh, you like being pushed against the wall? You like when you can't breathe? Don't you feel the pain in the people when they're not doing the right thing? People are suffering on the inside. They want to worship me, Hashem says. They want to go the right way, but they're lost. They need a leader. They need guidance. So look, I'm pushing you. I'm making it stuffy for you. I'm making it very hard for you to breathe. So you can feel maybe a little bit pain and suffering of the other person. 
But there's more. We'll spoke, speak about more. I, I just want to uh, say what the Midrash Tan Huma says about Avraham Avinu. Now, you know, we have in Zimun, when there are three men or ten men that eating bread or mizonot mitzaref, we say, Right? It's called Zimun Birshutchem. The Midrash says, where did we get the Zimun from? That's what Midrash asks. Midrash says like this. The Amraham Abinu, and our father Abraham, the Chol Maase Hesed Shaasa, he shlimo behesed ruhani. He would invite people over to his tent, and they would eat bread. And they ask Abraham, how much do we owe you for the beautiful meal? You don't owe me anything. Okay, thank you so much. We'll see you later. No, 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 not so easy. Not so fast. You got to thank uh, the host. Okay, thank you. We're host. No, no, no. You know, uh, Joseph Dreamberger has a sign. Uh, eat and thank the host. We're not, talk, we're not talking about Joseph or whatever Joseph, or whatever the owner of Joseph Dreamberger is. Thank the host. Hashem is hosting you in his world. You're the Oreya in his world. So Abraham Avinu says, you got to thank the host. Or who's the host? God Almighty. How do we thank God? Or who is God Almighty? So Abraham Avinu used to convert people. He used to bring people close to Hashem. Monotheism. That's Abraham Avinu, right? And he told them, Nebarech lelohenu she'achanu mishelo. Let's thank God, the one we, where we, who we ate from his food. That's the chesed Abraham Avinu did with other people. So Noah, you couldn't do that also? You couldn't do chesed? Nobody's asking you to do physical chesed. You can't go and teach people about God. You can't tell people you got to stop your ways in a nice, gentle manner. You couldn't do that, Noah? Not only that, the Sephorno says, Sephorno from the, the Rishonim, the commentaries, he says like this, Hashem didn't find favor, or Noah didn't find favor in, in God's eyes, not because he was worthy of anything. No. He did not teach his generation to worship God like Abraham did, like Moshe did, like Shemuel did. So now after we learned all this, that Noah, the reason why Hashem is so upset at Noah is because Noah is only walking with God, doing what God wants. Doing the Ben Adam Lamakom, but not doing the Ben Adam Lahabero. I read you another Midrash. Abraham Avinu goes out to the Minhama between the four kings against the five kings. When he comes out, he's greeted by two people. One of them is Melech Sedom. Melech Sedom tells him, Tell me Hanefesh, Verechush Kahlach. Abraham, give me all the people that you saved from the Minhama, and I'll give you all the spoils. I'll give you all the money. Abraham Avinu says, I don't want the people, I don't want the spoils. Take everything. Why? Because I don't want anybody to say that Abraham Avinu got wealthy because of uh, Melech Sedom. That's one guy. Another person that greeted Abraham was Malki Tzedek Melech Shalim. Now the rabbis want to know who is this Malki Tzedek Melech Shalim? Malki Tzedek Melech Shalim is Shem ben Noah. So imagine this, ladies and gentlemen. Shem ben Noah says the Midrash. Shem ben Noah greets Abraham Avinu. And by the way, you should know that Noah did meet Abraham Avinu for 48 years. They were alive together 48 years. According to the Torah, if you take the chronological order of things and the years, 48 years they saw each other. But Shem ben Noah, which is now Malki Tzedek Melech Shalem, he greets, uh, he greets Abraham Avinu. And Abraham Avinu asks him like this, Ketzad yatsatem min ha-teva. What zechud did you have for being saved from the Mabul? And going in the Teva, and 12 months later leaving. He says, Because we performed uh, acts of sedaka in the Teva. The reason why God saved us, and nothing happened to us in the Mabul, is because we did sedaka on the Mabul. What's sedaka? What are you talking about? There were poor people on the Teva? Who did you do tzedakah with? It was only you, your father, your brothers, and their wives. Who, what tzedakah did you do? Amar lo, so Shem ben Noah tells him, Ha-haya ve-ha-behema ve-ha-uf. We did tzedakah with the animals. How exactly? Lo hayinu yeshenim kol ha-layla. We didn't sleep all night. You know, not all animals eat at the same time. 
Some animals eat in the morning, some in the afternoon, some in the evening, some twice a day, some three times a day, some every ten minutes. So we're constantly doing sedaka with the animals. Constantly feeding the animals. You know, ladies and gentlemen, there's a halakha. If you own a dog or a cat or any animal, you're supposed to feed them before you feed yourself. Do you know what is this teaching me? That I'm not supposed to think about myself only. I'm supposed to think about others, even animals, yes. You're supposed to have some compassion over animals. Didn't Hashem create animals also? So he says, we did sedaka with the animals. And he tells them like this, one time we delayed feeding the lion the right time. The, uh, the lion bit my father and he started limping from that day on. This is the Midrash. So Abraham says like this. Look. These people did tzedakah with animals and God saved them. He saved their lives. And what if I do kindness with people? What about that? Maybe God will save me from any catastrophes that will happen in the world. Miyad! Right away, Abraham Avinu said, I'm going out on this project, on this mission. Eshel! Eshel, you know Eshel Shabbat? Ladies and gentlemen, what does Eshel stand for? Aleph, Shin, Lamed. Aleph is Achila. Shin is Shetia. Lamed is Lina. I will have my tent open for everyone. Food, drink, board, hospitality. You come eat, no questions asked. If I saw what happens when a person does hesed and kindness with an animal, what will happen if I do kindness with a human being? This is Abraham. Noah, couldn't you learn from Abraham? You tell me, Noah is not at the same time as Abraham. But don't you know that in the back of your head? Why do you think God created you? Why do you think God created us, ladies and gentlemen? Why did God create us? To be in our own bubble and not care about anybody else? God created us to worry about everybody else. It's hard. But you have to worry about everybody else. That is why, by the way, there's a mitzvah in the Torah to get married and have kids. Why? Why do I have to get married and have kids? Because it's not about you. When you get married, you'll realize it's not about you. You'll know it's not about you. Anytime you think you want to sit down and relax, honey, this, honey, that, it's not about you. And it's never about you. It'll never be about you. You have to, it's for other people in the world. I want to read you over here what the Shem and Rosh says. Shem and Rosh says something fascinating. He says like this, Shem Rosh is a rabbi in Williamsburg, Baruch Hashem, alive in our generation. He says, Olam Hesed God created the world on the foundation of kindness. And he sustains it on the uh, foundation of kindness. There must be kindness in the world. Jews and non Jews alike, there must be kindness in the world. Why? He said, Ki mizug ha'olam i efshar rak ba'asiyat hesed. The world cannot go on if there is no kindness in the world. You help your friend with what he needs. We all learned the Avot when we were young. It's all about Hesed. Fine. He says like this. But there's a sickness in people. It's not a physical sickness. It's a mental sickness that people have. What is it? They don't care about others. It's a sickness. Yes, it is a sickness. When you don't care about other people, it's a sickness. It's all about me. That's the only thing I care about in this world. This is a major sickness. If you have the sickness, you will never do kindness with anybody because it's all about you in the world. And he says like this. You ever think why God created the world with the odd bit? How did he create the world with the odd bit? Because bit is sheet, bara Elohim. Why, if, if, if the Aleph bit, Aleph is first, why can't Hashem create the world or the Torah first letter Aleph? Why is the first letter bit? He says, because everyone should know 
They are seen naked enough tamid. And always put it in the center of your eyes. Why is the Torah uh, start with the letter Bet? Bet is two, ladies and gentlemen. It's about two people in this world. It's not only one person. If Hashem would have created the world with Aleph, he'd say, oh, it's all about me. No, no, Bet. There's more than you in the world. He says, Hashem didn't create the world only for you. Rak gam ba'abur aherim. Who was created for you and for you and for you and for everyone. This is where he plugs it into the Noah. When God Almighty, when Hashem Barak sees that people are stealing from one another, we said Hamas is stealing from one another. This is the opposite of kindness. When you steal from a person, it's the opposite of kindness. The world cannot go on like this. This is why God decided He's going to destroy the world. Nothing good will come out of it. Like I said earlier, idolatry, adultery, uh, what's the third one? Murder, thank you. No, I'll tolerate it. This is the world. If there's Hamas in the world, if there's lying and cheating and thievery in the world, cannot go on. Then he brings like this. He says, Why out of all punishments does God punish them with water? He says, he brings the Rebbe of Bells, he says like this. We say in Tehillim, Anyone? No, 26 Hadul Hashem Kitab that we say on Shabbat. No, nobody? Okay, fine. So, what does that mean? God puts land on top of water because his, his kindness is forever and ever. What does that mean? He says like this Why did God make it that we're always standing on water? Right? You know what happens if Has Shalom, God decides that the world will open up, the water starts coming up, Has Shalom, what will happen? We see it. He says, why did Hashem create that the land, or make it that the land has to stay on the water? We explain on Sukkot that Mayim, water, is the basic necessity of all human beings. And kindness is a basic necessity of all human beings. You know, people flourish when you say a nice word to them. People grow when you smile at them, when you talk to them. That's how you grow people. Not with acts of what you do with them, but sometimes it's just a nice smile. It's a nice hug sometimes. It's a nice word. That's mayim. That's chesed. He says, That's why God created the world on water. To remind you, always do kindness with one another. He says, Now we understand what it means. You know why Hashem roka? Why Hashem made that the artist always says, Because he always wants chesed in the world. And how do I remember that Hashem always wants chesed in the world? Look at this land on water. But what happened in the generation of the flood? Shall we puch midat chesed? The water is coming to remind them because you did not act like water. Kindness, graciousness, being kind to one another, the water is coming to remind you and the water got rid of all of them. Unbelievable. This is what Noah was missing, what was lacking in Noah. Noah does not do kindness with people. I'm worshiping God the way I want to worship God. It doesn't matter how people are worshiping God. I'm good. That's all that matters.
This is what it says. It's very big. It's very deep. So I want to tell you over here what I saw about how bad it was in the time of the Mabul. I'm going to tell you a very deep concept. It's not like a Zohar or Kabbalah concept, but it's just something nice if you, let's uh, work it together. There's a student of the Hashem Tava Kadosh, his name is Rab Levi Saras. He says like this, he says, all the evil and the impurity in the world comes if you don't know who that is, that's a Malach Mavit. He has a name also. The evil inclination, he's the same guy. The angel of death, he's the same guy. All the impurity of the world comes from, world comes from him. It comes also from the Nahash. From the primordial uh, serpent of uh, creation, the Nahash. But both of them, both the Samech Mem Aleph Lamed, that's his name, we're not allowed to pronounce the name. Both the Samech Mem Aleph Lamed and the Nahash must have good inside of them to keep them alive. Because everything in the world, even though it's evil, must have good in it. He says, how? Look, this is fascinating. He says, Benahash, in the word Nahash, Haot Het Zera. The Het in the Nahash is bad. Aval Haot Nun, the Hashin, Hem Kohot Atov. Shin and Nun is good. So what we just established, Het is bad, Shin and Nun is good. Good. In the name Samech Mem Aleph Lamed, he says, Samech and Mem is Ra. Samech and Mem is already bad. So let me stop right here. If I take the Het from the Nahash, which is bad, and the Samech and Mem from the Samech Mem Aleph Lamed, which is bad, what word did I just make? Hamas. So which means the people in the time of the generation were so evil that they were tapping into these evil forces of the Samech Mem Aleph Lamed and the Nun Het Shin, mainly in the Het and the Samech and the Mem. That's why they made Hamas. Oh, so if that's the case, what letters do we say are good? Well, I'll repeat it. If in the Nahash the Het is bad, Nun and Shin is good, and Aleph Lamed in Samech Mem Aleph Lamed is good. Now we understand the measurements of the Teva. How? Because the Ot Aleph, Hashem tells uh, Noah, you have to make it, it has to have like a mat mil ma'la, it has to have like a border, a, a thickness of one amma. One is Aleph. That's the Aleph in the Samech Mem Aleph Lamid. Oh, why was it 30 amma height? Because that's Lamid. That's the Lamid in Samech Mem Aleph Lamid. That's the good. Why was it 50 Hamishim Ruhba with? Because that's the noon in the Nahash, that's still good. And Shin, Shalosh Me'ot, 300. What's the Shin from Moshe? That's from the Nahash, the Ot Shin, which is good. So you think, there's, there's no, there's no uh, coincidences in the Torah. Why exactly does it have to be this? What Hashem is telling Noah, keep all the bad out, put the good in. All the good has to be in the Teva, and all the bad leave it outside. We already saw what happens when the bad is in, prevalent in the world. The bad is Hamas is outside. Leave it all outside. Bo ata vechol betecha el teva. You and your whole family and your whole being come into the teva, and in the teva you learn how to do kindness with animals. So therefore, when you go out, you do kindness with human beings. I saw that Sefer Kisera Hamim says something fascinating. He says, "Look at the word Mabul. Mabul is a flood. How's Mabul written? Mem bet." Vav Lamed. He says, Mabul is Rashi Tebot. Mavet v'chayim beyad lashon. You hear this, ladies and gentlemen? It's a pasuk in Mishle. It's a pasuk in Proverbs. Mavet v'chayim beyad lashon. You could kill somebody with your speech, and you could give them life with your speech. Noah, you could have created them. You could have created them anew. You could have made them grow. You could have given them life by talking to them nicely and bringing them back to the path. You didn't give them Hayim, you gave them Mavit. Therefore, I'm giving you the Mabul, which is the acronym of Mavit the Hayim Bead Lashon. Not only that, Noah has three sons, right? Shem, Ham, Yefet. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the Rashet Evot of Shem, Yefet, and Ham? Siyah. You know what the word Siyah means in Hebrew? Speech. Hashem is even indicating to Noah and his three sons, you have to have speech. Checking with her because she's Israeli. Right. Siyah, we say it every day. Siyah siftotenu. Our speech. 
with our sp- Hashem is telling Noah, look, in your sons you have the names. Shem, Yefet, and Ham. To indicate to you, to teach you, use your speech the right way. Beseech me, pray to me on behalf of the generation. And he didn't. Says Rabbi Yonatan Aipshitz, he says like this, he says, if we take the Lamed of the 30, of the height, if we take the Shin of the 300, of the uh, length, and we take the noon of the 50 of the rohav of the, of the width, it makes what word? Lashon. Lashon, your tongue. So even in the measurements of the teva, Noah has to learn from the measurements to use his lashon. But says Rabbi Yonatan Aipshis, but Noah chose in order to open, in, 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 instead of opening his mouth, he chose to close his mouth. What letter comes after Lamid? Mem. What letter comes after Shin? S- taf. What letter comes after Nun? Samech. That makes the word Satam. You know what Satam means? Close. He chose instead of opening his mouth to beseech God on behalf of the Jewish people, he chose to close his mouth and say, so as long as I'm good, doesn't matter what happens to everybody else. This is what the rabbis say, ladies and gentlemen, at the Pasuk, really not a Pasuk, in the Mishnah Perkei Avot. Lefum Tsa'ara agra. The ma- basic meaning of it is the fum tsa'ara agra. According to the pain, the gain. Right? You're going to go to the gym. It's going to be very hard for you. But it has its benefits. Why? Because after you come out, buff. So the fum tsa'ara agra. But the rabbis say like this. Le fum means the mouth. Fum in Aramaic is mouth. Le fum in the mouth, there is tsa'ara and there's also agra. Sa'ara is pain and agra is reward. With your mouth, you can either bring down from heaven above either barminan pain or hopefully gain. When do you get the gain? When do you get the pain? Hazrat Shalom? Well, it depends. Are you a man that lives only for yourself or are you looking for other people? Are you beseeching Hashem for other people? Are you praying on behalf of the other people? If you do that, you'll get the, you'll get the gain. You'll get the reward. You'll get the agra. Therefore, now we understand why the first thing Noah does when he leaves the Teva, what does he do, ladies and gentlemen? He brings korbanot. The first thing before planting, the first thing he does, he brings korbanot. Why? Because today, we don't have korbanot. So what's instead of our korbanot? Tefillah. So Noah learned his lesson in the Teva, that he didn't pray to God on behalf of his generation. Now he wants to fix it up by bringing korbanot as a form of prayer to Hashem, that I learned my lesson in the Teva, please Hashem now forgive me for my sin and not uh, asking you to save the people in the generation of the flood. I'd like to conclude with what the Todot Yaakov Yosef says when we said earlier about the word Sohar. Right? Remember we said the word Sohar, Hashem tells Noah to make it Sohar. And we're not really so sure what Sohar means. Does Sohar mean a window or does Sohar mean a gem? Says the Sefer Todot Yaakov Yosef like this. He says, the word Sohar, you can make three words from the word Sohar. You can make the word Sara, which is trouble. Retse, which is accept. Or Sohar. Sohar is light. He says like this. Hashem never told Noah to make a window. Hashem tells Noah, make a Sohar ta'asela teva. Noah is supposed to understand himself that he's supposed to take the word Sohar, switch it around to make the word Retse. Which means I'm supposed to pray on behalf of the generation that Hashem should take the Tsara, which is also the letters of Tsohar, take the Tsara, switch it around, make it the word Sohar, or make it the word Retse, and let the people of generation live and not die. But he failed to understand that. So he alone made a halon in the teva. He alone thought that what God means by the word sohar is a window. So let me make a window. But Hashem is telling him, no, that's not my intention. My intention is sohar ta'asela teva. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what the word teva also means? Teva means word. Now in Hebrew we have tevot the otiyot. Otiyot are letters Teva is a word. You know what Hashem is telling Noah? Sohar ta'asela teva, not the physical ark, 
But the word teva, the word sohar, sohar ta'asara teva, the word sohar, take it, switch it around, make it the letters retse. Pray on behalf of the generation. Noah failed to understand that, and therefore Noah, um, therefore the generation of the flood perished, and Noah thought that he's supposed to make only a, only a uh, halon. That's exactly what he ended up doing. So the lesson that we learn from here, there's the Imre Kodesh that says over here that this is, you know, when do we read Noah? We read Noah and Hajvan. Always, every single year, we read Noah and Hajvan. Why? What does the word Hajvan mean? Hajvan comes from the word, he says, the Imre Kodesh, Merahashim Siftotenu. You know what Merahashim means? Whispering, moving our lips. See? It's good that she knows Hebrew, right? She could uh, stamp everything that I'm saying. What the Imre Kodesh is saying, Noah has to fall out in the month of Heshvan from the word Merahashim, moving your lips, to teach you, every single one of us, from now on, when you pray, stop thinking only about yourself. Move those lips in order to pray for other people in the world. Unfortunately, there's a lot of tragedies in the world. People need Yeshua'ot. People need salvation. People need baracha. And that's why the Gemara says, When you pray on behalf of your friend and he needs the same Yeshua as you, you get answered first. Why? Because when you're praying on behalf of your friend, you're showing, you're not only caring about yourself, you're caring about your other friend. You're caring about your friend. That's what God wants in the world. That's what Hashem wants. Hashem wants that there should be friendship in the world. Hashem wants that there should be unity in the world. Hashem wants that there should be Ben Adam and Havero in the world, caring about other people. May we, Ba'ad Hashem, take the lesson of Noah and not repeat his sin, not repeat what he did. And Ba'ad Hashem, find favor not only in God's eyes, but find favor in human beings' eyes. Baruch Adonai Le'ulam. Amen. The Amen.